My name is Sabine Lenger. I'm a lecturer here in, in chemistry. I'm an organic biogeochemist. That means that I use molecules um, of microorganisms and of plants in order to track biogeochemical processes in the present. And the cool thing about these molecules is they can be preserved for a very long time, like over millions of years. So we can also use them to track these processes in the past. Open access to a lot of people, I think, means um, making their publications available to everyone free of charge. I think, to me, open access means a lot more than that. It, it also means to be completely transparent about your research, to share your data, to make your data available, to share your methodology and to help people reproduce uh, your experiments. So I think open research starts with, with talking to colleagues about, about your results and your methods, getting feedback from them um, at conferences, presenting uh, what you have and, and taking everything you get on board, so being completely transparent about it. It also means that in the generation of your results you should um, think about how you can store them, back them up and make them available in open data formats so data formats that are not proprietary or owned by instrument manufacturers, for example. For me, the, the key benefits of this are really that it has a wider reach, more people can read it, you can share it with a much wider audience. I guess number two is that uh, it makes research less expensive, um, not only for us, the more uh, research that is openly available, uh, the less institutions have to pay for um, access for journal subscriptions, but also for developing countries who, who really do not have, institutions in these countries really do not have the money to pay for access for these journals, so that really um, stifles them in their research capacity. Um, and uh, the third one is, is definitely that it helps with research-informed teaching as well, because the more papers I have openly available, the more I can share with my students um, without have, uh, having to have um, an institutional subscription to this, these journals. I've recently gotten involved with a, a preprint server for the Earth Sciences, which is called Earth Archive. It is a way of uploading your results and publications before you even submit them to journals for everyone to read and see. Um, and for you to get more feedback from the community about them um, as well. It's a bit of a scary way to do that because you upload them without them having gone through peer review um, and you might be worried about being scooped. But it's actually a really, really good way to, to tell the community this is what we've done, this is what it is, without having to wait for sometimes years of, of peer review or um, journal editing time. Uh, that could just delay the dissemination of this research. This trend is certainly being driven by technology. In the past, it was very difficult to disseminate your research results and we needed journals for that because it needed to be printed. Now that we have the internet, we can do that uh, much more inexpensively um, and it is much easier to distribute your research without uh, it having to be in a journal. So I think we should definitely do it because um, it makes publishing less expensive for everyone, um, but also it makes your research available to a wider audience. If it's not available to people, then they can't, they can't read it, and if they can't read it, they can't cite it. So it's um, really very important that it is available to um, the widest audience possible.